In this video, let's go and take a look at the transformation here from a parabola in vertex form all the way to a parabola is in conic sections. So in this case, you can see I have a parabola that is in vertex form. And most students in Algebra 2 are going to remember the general or vertex form of a parabola. Most students are able to identify the vertex as the opposite of whatever's inside that parenthesis. So in this case, it'd be a negative seven, and then K, which would be a three. And then whenever there's a coefficient in front, you know, as long as it's positive, we know it's going to open up. If it's negative, it opens down. And then whatever that scalar number is, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. Two is not too bad though. Like we can just kind of follow some points here from the left and from the right. I'm not gonna be accurate. I'm just gonna draw us a general form of this parabola here in vertex form. So that is going to be the parabola in vertex form. And then once we get into parabolas where we're getting on for conic sections, a lot of students are like, are those the same parabola? How do these compare? Like what exactly are we doing? And so what I wanna do is just kind of show you like how do we go from here to there? Because guess what? It's the exact same equation. Now the difference here is there is some extra information that we're going to use for our parabolas and conic sections to help us better understand the graph as well as the characteristics of the parabola rather than just a scalar and its vertex. To do that though, we need to have it in this form. Let's just go on kind of go through how we go from here all the way over to there. Now, the first thing I want you to recognize here in this vertex form is the x plus seven quantity squared is isolated. It's all by itself. Even though this one's on the right-hand side, this one's on the left-hand side, all we're gonna do then is I just want you to say, well, why don't we just isolate this? To isolate this, what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna subtract a three on both sides. And then we're gonna undo the two, right? So we're gonna divide by two. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, we have now identified this in its standard form for in conic sections. Now again, obviously you can just apply the reflexive properly and just flip that around. And you'll see it's exactly the same as what we're dealing with over here. Now, however, there is some important things that we need to understand. The H and K stays the same. That's the cool thing about dealing with the vertex form here for a quadratic compared to one for a parabola in conic sections. We're still gonna have H, K is gonna represent the vertex. However, we have this new element which is gonna be represented as P. 4p is going to be the coefficient here of my, whatever my linear term, in this case, it's going to be the y minus k. So we always wanna make sure we have isolated our quadratic, these x minus h quantity squared. That's always gonna be isolated, and then we have the 4p. Now, a lot of times students are like, well, what exactly is the p? Like, how do you graph it in that case? Well, the cool thing is, you're gonna graph the exact same way. My h here is opposite of seven, so that's gonna be negative seven, and we have negative three, like we have our vertex. Vertex is exactly the same. The only added elements now that we're gonna have here is we're gonna have this point here that's inside of the problem, which we're gonna call our focus, and then we're gonna have the point on the outside, which are gonna be uh, called our directrix. Now, the distance from the vertex to our focus, as well as the distance from the vertex to our directrix is actually exactly the same. Now, how do you find that distance from the vertex to the focus, as well as distance from the vertex to the directrix? That is gonna be your value P, ladies and gentlemen. And in this case, we can be able to find our value phi by just setting four P equal to one half. So therefore, if I wanna be able to find my focus, all I'm simply gonna do is add a 1 8 over um, 1 8 to the three. Um, and if I wanna find my directrix, I would subtract the 1 8 from the three. You can see it's going up, so you add it, right, to your y coordinate three. Or you would say you would subtract it, which again, this is going to be a y minus a three minus 1 8. And therefore, then you can find your directrix. So hopefully you understand now the transformation here from our vertex form all the way now over to our standard form of our parabolas. In the next video, I'll go through a step-by-step -step explanation of how to be able to graph a parabola when you have it in standard form, but identifying the vertex, the focus, as well as the directrix. I'll see you there.